Hi, I am Dr. Rochelle Palcesco, and I'm here with Dr. Uh, Graziella Pellegrini. And um, I have a few questions on regenerative ophthalmology and um, your field. So I think, first question is, what do you think is the biggest hurdle um, in your area of regeneration that's going to take the longest to get from our um, bench to bedside? Well, it's hard to see because uh, we have uh, you know, many hurdles uh, at regulatory level, at uh, technical level, at, uh, I mean, in translating from the bench to the bedside. I think that probably one of the most, uh, uh, the field that uh, have more expectancy from the physician and from the patient is the, the field of uh, induced pluripotent stem cell. But, um, and there are many groups working in this direction, and there is probably even uh, in Japan where there was the first discovery, a strong pressure to have uh, the first uh, clinical trial done uh, by those people. However, I think that this field probably will have more hard work than the other one because uh, we have not a clear standardized condition for culturing these cells for being sure about the possibility to avoid any kinds of uh, undifferentiated uh, cells to remain in the culture and uh, uh, big variability in terms of results, in terms of transduction. So I think this, there is a big pressure in this direction, but I see this still as probably the most far from the real uh, useful clinical application, this is my opinion. Um, do you think there's enough dialogue between the clinicians and the researchers? So we heard from uh, people earlier about um, how to get things uh, to, the, to the bedside faster and maybe starting with more focus at the initial idea. Um, but I think then we can lose a lot of the um, good discoveries from basic science. So do you think there's enough dialogue, too much, or...? Well, I think, of course, uh, it depends on the people, on the groups. Uh, is, uh, we cannot say something in general. But I think the main problem could be not the dialogue, because we have, uh, at this point, at least in uh, Western countries, but even in Asian countries, we have a lot of meeting, having, uh, giving the possibility of cross-talk between those people. Uh, what I, s I feel as a possible problem, that was a problem many times, is uh, um, the role of the people not the dialogue. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, when there is the clinical application, automatically uh, the, I mean, the physician or the surgeon start thinking that is their own uh, role to do things uh, for the patient. And uh, uh, scientists start thinking that this is no more their role to be involved in this part of the work. And this yeah. is not true. In my experience, and we have translated many, yes. many therapies, uh, the part, the biological part should be performed by biologists from the beginning of basic science up to the end after the follow-up on the patient. And the uh, medical uh, part, I mean the physician, has a role from the initial planning of the basic research because you should consider from the beginning what will be the situation on the patient, which kind of environment, which kind of material, which kind of uh, uh, manipulation during surgery you have and then up to the end after the follow-up. So probably we have better defined the reciprocal role of these two specialists and should start from the beginning of the planning and should continue up to over the end. This, this is, I think, the main problem in uh, translational science. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, so there are so many strategies we heard this week with the cell-based therapies and gene therapy and so many different areas of the eye. Um, what do you think is, is going to be the um, closest to being um, uh, the biggest discovery, I guess, in, in, our, in our time? What is going to be the easiest area of the eye or the best therapy? Well, uh, what I could say that there are many proposals, but we need uh, all of them and probably some other more because <laughs> depending on the kind of uh, pathology, the kind of therapy we want to do, we, we need always more and more things, uh, especially the translational science uh, uh, requires a lot of different specialists in the field. I could say from my personal experience or even looking at results from other colleagues that uh, once you plan to do gene therapy, you usually think that you need the biology and the, I mean the vectors. Mm -hmm. And then 
the medical doctor that is not true because you need sometimes depending on the body sites on the kind of surgery of the kind of microenvironment you need uh, biologists but you need uh, uh, expert in vectors you need immunologists you need engineers sometimes to plan and to to construct special device for delivery you need uh, um, surgeon different kind of surgeon depending on the body area depending on kind of of vascularization depending on many things and uh, let's say mathematics for statistics and wh whatever so uh, I think we need many technology and sometimes the same tissue uh, depending on the kind of pathology on which it is applied needs different kind of uh, nanotechnology or gene therapy or other kind of approach so um, I think we should focus on the final results and then plan what we need before uh, there is no a special technique better than the other. We have to combine many things because, I mean, translational science is like a black box containing inside many things. Uh, and so my last question would be with us, seeing that it is so interdisciplinary and it takes all of these people, um, and meetings like these are bringing more people together, where do you really see this field in five to ten years? Well, uh, it depends on what he consider from the scientific point of view, or from uh, the patient point of view. Uh, if you think in terms of scientific point of view, I see a big, big increase in science in five years because I see this field is rapidly moving and the interaction between people are developing a lot of different, uh, very interesting approach. So from a scientific point of view, what is science fiction today can become reality in five years. From the patient point of view, it's not like that, unfortunately, because depending on the, our capability to perform the translational medicine, I mean, to be able to reach them, uh, even when we are able to do that, the regulatory hurdle are becoming too hard, too difficult to overcome, and so expensive that even for Western countries, being more rich than other parts of the world, it becoming very difficult to, to be sustained. So could be that from the patient point of view, in five years, we will be not so far from today. Thank That's you. That's my opinion. <laughs> Thank you very much.